we move on, I will put this thing at the end if you have time. Uh, Chandra, it's your own uh, another topic that you are talking. I well, Dr. Bala is going to leave uh, after this presentation. So, if anyone or anybody from the audience has any questions, please do that uh, at that time. Thank you. Go ahead. So this is an interesting topic about extending the range of vision of uh, monofocal IOL design. It uh, basically, I was asked to talk a little bit about monovision, which is uh, something that uh, we have started to do less and less. Um, obviously, monovision by definition is an attempt to use an isometropia to extend the range of vision of an individual. The amount of uh, an isometropia you induce varies a lot, and the idea is to achieve some sort of pseudo accommodation in one eye. And that amount of pseudo accommodation is a little bit more complicated than what we often think of. It requires a certain amount of postoperative myopia, uh, a depth of focus within that uh, eye lens, uh, an amount of meiosis, how much the patient squeezes their eyelids together, the spherical aberration of the system and the corneal multimodality. So a composite of that leads to pseudo uh, accommodation. Now, if you look at the each lens, and this is a beautiful publication that is uh, in Acta Ophthalmologica, which tries to model this. Uh, there have been uh, lots of studies on uh, monovision, but this actually tried to model it by looking at the, um, uh, the fixation distance in meters and looking at the amount of defocus created by the lens. So if an object is at position F, the person is able to see to position D and back to P, because of the depth of focus of the, uh, of the eye. And that depth of field, if you look at figure two, which is to your right, uh, there are two scenarios. A patient is minus a quarter and they can see perfectly at four meters because they're minus a quarter. And then the vision is relatively flat for distance and then it gets worse as you come towards minus one. If the patient is minus one and a quarter, they see very well at 75 centimeters. So the, the blue line dips down to zero. And before that, there is a relative amount of blur. Um, when the blur circle uh, for this sort of condition before minus 0.75, the better, the line which has the smaller area under the curve dominates and the summated amount then gives you the good joint, conjoined fused uh, image from far to near. Now, that concept, if you actually do it in real life, say in the next image below, if you're a minus a quarter in both eyes, you see very well for far, but around 50, uh, two meters onwards, it slowly starts dropping and the logma visual acuity drops off. This is a practical comparison of the mathematical model. And so if you did minus a quarter in one eye and minus 1.25, obviously you extend that range. The point there being with a minus 1.25, uh, an isometropia or a difference of one to one and a quarter, you actually get a very flat profile all along. So the, um, how much you, you do, how you optimally uh, distribute your refraction, whether you choose minus a half, minus a three quarters, minus 1.25, or some people even go as far as two, if you were to look at the mathematical model, you would tend to favor minus 1.25 as your anisometropia. There is actually some mathematical logic behind it. And if you were to look at this defocus curve, which you've seen before, which is of SN60 wavefront and uh, the vivity, the SN60 wavefront is in black. I've taken the liberty of obviously altering somebody else's data, which is Alcon's data. And Sorry, I'm trying to move. If you go shift that SN60 wavefront so that it gives you the same amount of intermediate vision as VVT, let's say, VVT is quite good. Everybody seems to be happy. At one and a half, I, you're getting about in uh, uh, 60 centimeters, you're getting NA. I just shift that along. I have to shift it by about minus 075, a monofocal lens to get that performance of VVT. I have to shift it further to get good near visual acuity, I have to shift the SN60 wavefront by 1.25. So you can see logically, when you get to 1.25, you actually see quite well. And do you really need to push it further? Uh, I, I'm, in my case, I am very happy with a difference of 1.25. Now, 
that pseudo accommodation i've all so far been talking about the refractive outcome but pseudo accommodation is more than just the myopia that you induce in the iol there are a number of other factors such as meiosis get the focus of the lens material the aspericity the lid squeezing all these and i want to share with you an interesting project we did and it's been submitted for publication this is a defocus curve of a panoptic lens it's been flipped upside down the orange line is a set text message size now if you are between minus 1 and minus 3 and you want to see that the blue area in the middle that area in between these two curves is your reserve capacity if you see more than the orange line then you can see the orange line that's the minimum vision you need so that blue area is your reserve capacity now we always think of defocus curves for the population we don't think of the defocus curve for an individual if you actually sit and measure for each individual and calculate the area under the curve you find at the bottom you will see two histograms the the one on the right is at uh, uh, three months and it shows you that for each the individual uh, amount of uh, area under the curve varies for the same lens same model lens this is best corrected defocus curve data so it's not a refractive error issue the same lens is performing differently and has a different area of under curve under the curve for some people they just don't have the same reserve for others they have a lot of reserve and this is a comparison between the pan panoptics and the zeiss uh, at lisa trifocal and so you suddenly get to realize that biology has more of an impact than just the power of the iol you choose uh, in terms of uh, uh anisometropia anisometropia monovision is quite successful it works about 80% of the time whether you think 80% is quite successful or not and this is a lovely uh, literature review that was published some time ago of uh, monovision whether you consider in this modern era i suppose uh, in Bom in mumbai that would not be considered uh, satisfactory whereas in other parts of the world that might be more acceptable as an outcome but even with that there are disadvantages with monovision and therefore there is a demand sort of to move away from that concept the the issues are still of glare and halo because of the anisometropia you are creating a, a blur around especially in mesopic low light conditions you're creating a blur around the object and that anisometropic suppression is you can suppress it yourself provided you are not too myopic on one eye so if your anisometropia is one and a quarter or less you can actually suppress that contrast sensitivity when you look at an object with both eyes your contrast is much better than if you have one in focus and one out of focus and that contrast sensitivity dramatically deteriorates if your anisometropia is greater than 1 and 1/2 stereo acuity is also affected when you have one eye for far and one eye for near <coughs> however <coughs> while the stereo acuity drops from 40 to anywhere from 40 to 200 and can vary from person to person it is not enough to impact their activities of daily living significantly so whilst you stay under one and a half diopters again you are reasonably likely to get it right the problem of course is that of ocular dominance which eye is the dominant eye and they have a cataract you can't tell right handed people can be left dominant such as myself i am strongly left dominant when it comes to my eye. i probably was a left handed fellow but uh, my parents changed me to right hand um so getting the dominant eye wrong is also an issue vast in a group study situation here the near eye was set to 1 and 1/2 to 2 distance eye was set to minus a quarter you see they are very comparable um the first row of graphs tells you the uncorrected distance visual acuity the uncorrected binocular distance visual acuity is poorer for the crossed eye group and the near visual acuity is kind of neither here nor there it's okay but if you go to the second one second set of graphs the distal spectacle independence is slightly high is quite high for distance and near for the crossed group it might not be statistically significant because it's hard to apply some of these statistics but in this case especially for near it was they were more far more uh, spectacle dependent and if you go to the rightmost column which is the post operative satisfaction there are people 10% of the population thought they were worse off 6% for distance thought 6 and 1/2% for distance thought they were worse off 
And one of the things people really don't like is being worse off all the time for distance. For near task, it's a slightly different matter. They have been trained to accept it. Also, the issue is of targeting minus 1.25. It is actually a little bit harder to get 1.25 as a target. It is easier, and studies have shown this, to actually target emetropia. The error rate for near is actually likely harder. There have been other studies that have shown that there is no difference if you cross the two eyes, but practical experience tells us that it's different. Future of monovision versus bifocal PCIOLs. Now, we have talked about PCI, uh, presbyopia correcting IOLs. And if you compare the bifocal of the past, such as the Hoya lens, then of course there was more of a comparison. But now you've heard from other speakers that, you know, the new trifocals are so much better that it is hard to justify going down uh, to, towards a monofocal, uh, towards monovision, where there is still uh, a loss of stereopsis, which you don't get when you target both eyes for far. Now, in my, con in my practice, how do I select patients? I find it a difficult concept to explain one eye for far and one eye for near. I can explain it, but usually I get a shocking response from the patients, like they have never heard it before. However, if you're born with an isometropia, I think you should be smart enough to use that to your advantage. If they've had asymmetric nucleus sclerotic cataract and induced monovision on themselves, and have had second sight later in life, again, it's a worthwhile concept to keep in, uh, because they've gotten used to it. If they've been practicing in contact lens, of course I would do it. Commercial drivers, I never do it because they require good unaided vision for driving. And so again, that's a group that we don't do. How much anisometropia? Generally, I used to target 1.25. 0.75 to me was not really worth it unless you are an active desktop user, which is diminishing these days because everybody's got an iPhone or some sort of smartphone. But now around 0.5 to 0.6 has suddenly become an interesting area with things like Vivity, where you actually get a lot more, even if you have mild amount of an isometropia. I always do the distance eye first because then I can demonstrate what the other eye would look like by doing a trial of near ads to show you what the contralateral will achieve. There are, of course, we talked about monovision for distance and you can put an ED off on the contralateral side. I'm not a mix and match kind of person because again, it, I think I'm unable to explain the complexity to the patient. And of course, I, we, have, we are lucky enough to offer the ability to reverse it if you need LASIK. This is a comparison of, from the original trial where we had patients who had happened to have an isometropia during this uh, VBT clin randomized clinical trial. This is the post-hoc analysis, uh, post analysis we presented. And for them, the unaided distance vision was hardly different in the two groups where there was a half adapter difference versus no difference. But the near visual acuity picked up a significant amount with mini mono vision. The logma was 0.14. The consequence of that was with binocular distance visual acuity, a distance targeted VBT, only 26% were spectacle free for all tasks. Whereas 53% became spectacle free for all tasks. Both had excellent distance performance. Even if you had mini mono, micro mono vision, intermediate was even better than VVT for distance. And near task, of course, it was a, a, a vast big improvement. And I think the future is going to be, even though the trifocals have done well, this uh, future is heading towards less is more. Uh, thank you very much.